uh, it's probably the first thing in all our lives. And uh, you go back down to the, to the clubs and they'll probably be all home celebrating there tonight. And uh, it means so much to the, the families and everyone in the parish. So we're delighted tonight. By the way, who did you take the hurling from, the man or the dad? <laughs> um, well, the father hurled Man, she says, yeah. Well, Daddy hurled is about 48, so... <laughs> <laughs> another 19 years left me. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, uh, you've done it all in the game. You've nothing to prove, Kenny or yourself. Have you the motivation for this for another year? <laughs> well, the way, the way I always looked at it is, I think uh, your head will go before your legs. So as long as you stay hungry, I'll be hopefully here. <laughs> the, man, the, man, the man in the baseball cap on the sideline might make that decision for you as well. <laughs> What about yourself, Henry? I mean, there has to be, there has to be that little motivation now to go for the 10. Jeez, oh, Michael. Uh, no, I think, uh, you know, I, I suppose at this stage of my, my career, I think I just, once I get through the winter and injury-free, yeah. and, uh, you know, I think I'll just reflect on it and see how it goes. But, uh, you know, it's been wonderful times and we're privileged in Kilkenny. And I know, you know, sometimes I, I love to see underdogs win, and like last weekend with Donegal, but... We're absolutely delighted that Kenny are still at the top and we'll try and stay there as long as possible. All right, that's well. Mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that uh, they will, Des. And on a personal note, I have to say to the two lads here, it's been a privilege on behalf of Harding fans everywhere to see you guys play and to be in your company. Thank you very much indeed. Back to you, Des. Mm -hmm. Thank you indeed, Michael. Well, that's the view of the Kilkenny people in Dublin. What about the Kilkenny folk in Kilkenny? Marty Morrissey is down there. Let's join him. Well, as you can, as you can imagine, as you can imagine this, it might be their 34th All-Ireland title, but it's as good as their first because they're just really enjoying the wonderful success. I'm joined by two men who between them have 12 All-Ireland medals. This is Charlie Carter and Noel Skin. Charlie, what was your view? Was this a re one of the Kilkenny's finest performances? Ah, it is another great performance by Kilkenny and Marty. Um, I suppose today again they showed why they're the greatest team of all time. Uh, they're on the pace of the game. Unlike the last day, they're on the pace of the game right from the off today. And I mean, they never give Galway a, a, a chance there, you know? What was the turning point for you? Well, look, I suppose the real turning point came just after half time there when Sir Donnellan's goal was blew back. Maybe Joe Canning's goal, uh, shot hit the, the post and we went down and got a point off it. And then Sir Donnellan got sent off. And once Sir was sent off, it was, it was game set and match to Kenny, you know? Bit of history today, because I know you've nine All Ireland medals with some time, Noel Skeen, but Henry Shefflin and Noel Hickey joined you at the top of the pedestal. Yeah, it's great for the two lads now to reach uh, Noel and uh, Henry to reach nine. And I mean, it's a lot of hard work in that, Marty, and uh, I mean, to reach nine all Ireland medals, it's a team game, and you must remember, you won't reach anything unless you have a good team around you, but I'd like to say congratulations to, congratulations to the two boys, you know. And uh, you saw Henry Shefflin when he went through all the injuries, and uh, you know, because you're in the gym with him, yeah. how difficult it's been. I saw Henry Shefflin hardly able to walk into the gym in Hotel Kenny, and also last year with the shoulder, and the uh, work great that he went through, and the effort he put in to get back to we said be able to perform at the highest level again it was fantastic and I must well tell you any medals and any achievement and any awards you get he's well worth it after all the work he put in it's unbelievable like you know Charlie you played with Kilkenny Noel did is this the greatest Kilkenny team of all time uh, the world before today Marty and the certainly are after today well, well done congratulations to everybody in Kilkenny Charlie and Noel thank you both for joining us let me tell you let me tell you let me tell you that not alone are they celebrating their 34th All-Ireland title, but we've discovered that Elvis is alive and well in Kilkenny as well. From all of us in Kilkenny, back to you. Yeah, they don't get tired of winning, do they? All right, we've lost more to come in the programme, but now it's time to get reaction to the minor final. It saw Dublin, who won the football title last week, seeking a very rare minor double. They were up against the favourites, Tipperary. How did it turn out? Well, let's find out now from John Kenny. The drawn game between the sides was a thriller with Tipperary looking for their 19th title and their first since 2007, pegged back by a late late score from Paul Winters for Dublin which forced the game into today's replay with Tipperary remaining odds on favourites against the Dublin side looking for their first title since 1965. 
and it was Winters who opened the scoring in the first minute with a long-range free for Dublin. But Tipperary dominated the rest of the half with John McGrath scoring three frees while Mark McCarthy scored the opening goal for Tipperary after just ten minutes. McCarthy's goal setting the tone for the rest of the half. James Roach scored a couple of Dublin points to reduce the arrears, but Tipperary got their second goal five minutes after their first as Ty Gallagher put past Kieran McGowan in the Dublin goal. Gallagher running in unopposed to fire in Tipperary's second goal. Tipperary were well on top and by half time they were way ahead. This excellent score from John McGrath helped his side to a 2-10 to 5 point half time lead. Tip continued their points plunder after the restart and remained well in control after an excellent first half and indeed got the opening score of the second as McGrath took his personal tally to eight points with another fine score from the sideline. With such a large deficit, Dublin had to go for goal even at an early stage of the second half with this Cormac Coslow point not really what was needed for the dubs. The game settled to a point scoring final Tip contends to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Sean Mars point extending Tip's big advantage. Tipperary took their foot off the gas a little towards the end of the contest, perhaps understandably, and Dublin cut the gap a little as full forward Oshin O'Rourke got what turned out to be Dublin's only goal of the match. It was mere consolation for the dubs. The final point was, fittingly enough, scored by McGrath, who put over some tremendous points from both play and from dead balls. In the end, a runaway victory for Tipperary and title number 19 for their minors on a scoreline of Tipperary 218, Dublin 111. And Tipperary captain Bill Maher lifted the Irish Press Cup for his victorious side to confirm Tip as the worthy champions. The guys worked really hard today and uh, we're just delighted we got the performance that we've been training for all year and it's great to get it on our Ireland final day. It was never in doubt really, those early goals really set you up. Yeah, they did, and uh, I suppose we, took, we took a lot of uh, I suppose lessons from Donegal last week. They uh, scored 2-1 in the first six or seven minutes, and the game was over. So we tried to do that, and it worked today. So look, we're just delighted. They're, they're on the young fellas, and they do their best, and once they do their best, that's all we ask for, you know? It was always difficult today. You were always uh, behind and chasing. Yeah, like we didn't get the start we'd hoped we'd get, and uh, Tipperary and fair play to them. They took the goals very well, and actually we were chasing the game after that, so it was always going to be an uphill battle. All right then, great win for Tip. Donald, was it a, a hugely improved performance in your view from Tip? Uh, I think it was, Des. I think the last day, you know, possibly there were raging hot favourites and that they went out a little flat, you know, youngsters, it's hard to keep their feet in the ground, as it is for seniors when you're going uh, as, as, as yeah. favourites. But, you know, I made a note um, early on there, this is Ronan Mark coming, I mean, you know, the, the defenders attacked the ball much better and they got out in front of Dublin. Um, you know, Jack Peters there makes a fantastic catch uh, and, and, and clear the ball away. And they cleared with purpose, they were seeking their men at, at all times whereas Dublin were a little bit off the pace maybe three quarter pace whereas Tip I, I had, the note I had was like Tip full of jizz and I think that was the way it was and you know we see Mark McCarthy bursting through here no the defenders do well they do you know he's, he's forced wide and squeezes the ball in there fantastic shot between mm. the keeper and the post and you know that set Tip away right okay he, he was left corner forward but he's, he, he was alternate between right and left and a fantastic strike as he, as he hit in the, in the, in the uh, semi-final as well and uh, Ty Gallagher great pace getting away from his marker there right and uh, has a good look and sticks it down right it does, mm. does everything right so you know once they you know got to half time two ten to five points or, or, so, up, right you know no yeah. in fairness to Dublin they didn't give up but um, really when you, when you look at the, the display John McGrath right Lots of points and freeze, but this is a glorious point. Just after half time, when Dublin would have been hoping maybe to get the first point in the board, Tip got the first point, and I think that set it, you know, that set the, the market on for the rest of the game. All right, they've been doing very well, Cyril, haven't they, with that underage? Yeah, well, I tip in a lot of changes for this match. Dylan Fitzell played most with his championship games, dropped for the last day, wing back, he wound up mm -hmm. centre forward today. Uh, Jack Shelley within full forward, Ty Gallagher within corner forward, all the moves that the management team made, they have great orders. They were expected to do this the last day with all due respect to Dublin, this is a very hot tip team but didn't do it. It just shows that it could be caught the last day but today like to really show, show the wares and young, young, you know, young McGrath again, a fantastic talent. So like people talk about tip being gone, Des, like mm -hmm. you know, uh, <laughs> you go in to look at them now, they've won the senior two years ago, they won the under 21 two years ago, now they won the minor. So like you know, they have a lot of stuff to work on and the senior set up. I suppose even when you look at their management team as well today, a lot of them are very young. Former 
our t yeah. Tipperary players, you know, Noel Morris, Brian Horgan, Martin Marr, and William Marr as well, would have yeah. captained Tipperary to a minor title a good few years ago. So I suppose you could be looking at a future management team maybe down the line in Tipperary. But, yeah. um, you know, I think they, they refocus. Give him an O'Shea a chance, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but he has good, stuff to, work, he has good stuff to work on. There's yeah. a lot of pool of talent around there. They were quite organised as well, you know, but... Um, yeah. I think they may have took their eye off the ball ever so slightly in the in the, for, the first day, and uh, you know they, they they readdressed that and mm. they really showed today they were clinical. From a Dublin point of view, Donald, then where do you think it went wrong for them today? Well, I suppose you know when you when you're when you go in as underdogs, uh, days, you know you need to you need to take all the chances. And in the first half, they, they had a few chances there, and Oshino Roke, who, who played well and tried very hard, gets a chance there, missed the pick. If he got got the pick, he has great pace. He might have got away and got an early score, and you know tip come away easily with the ball. And you know um, Ronan Mar here gets a slightest of hook down James Roach, and the ball goes out harmlessly wide, and you know that's a killer. I think there's the wrong option. He should have probably tried to. Place it inside and uh, Carmo Castro, you know, start the midfield. They probably need them at full forward, gets a fantastic point. And they fought very hard. And, you know, they, when they ran at Tipperary, they had him in trouble. And, um, you know, this was a great goal coming up here from Mission Row. Squeeze it in again. Great shot. Not really much Mar, the keeper, could have done about it. But, you know, that was coming a little bit too yeah. late. And uh, Machine Rook finished up here with a. Uh, um, that's, the, that's the replay of the goal. And he finished up with a good point. So they never give up and they fought very hard. But I think that, you know, tip. Superior stick work and the superior bit of pace in the day. That's a good shot. If he could have kept the low, might have ended up with tip awardy winners from the start. Okay. One interesting thing about the match, actually, that they're on both sides, because Dublin won the football last week, there were uh, lads trying to get a football and a hurling minor All Ireland Championship medal. And we met some of the tip lads coming out, and we were asking six of them won football All Ireland last year and then won hurling today. So congratulations to them. I know they're out in the Louis Fitzgerald Hotel. It's some, some achievement to do that. Anyway, man of the match and team of the year are coming up. But first, let's look at the best of the action from yesterday's replayed intermediate camogie final between Derry and Galway. Pat McAuliffe watched this one. Derry and Galway provided more great drama as the Ulster side came from seven points down to lift the intermediate crown in this replay at Dunamore Ashburn's fine grounds in County Mead. Galway played with a strong wind in the opening half and they got off to a great start with Ailey Shaw Riley forcing home an opening goal after just two minutes. Their second goal was an absolute cracker as Orla Curtin found the roof of Claire O'Kane's net on 22 minutes. Derry's hard-working midfielder Sinead Cassidy got a good point for her efforts. But sharpshooter Karen Kilt, who would finish with a goal at five points, also finding her range. Galway corner forward, Elena Sullivan, had the last score of the opening half to leave her side two goals and seven points to six points in front at half time. But Derry produced a great comeback. Full forward Katie McEnany reduced Galway's lead to three points when she grabbed a high ball to find the net with just 13 minutes left. She then added a good point as the Connacht side started to lose their grip. A score from a free by substitute Rachel Monaghan restored confidence for Galway and a two-point lead. But up stepped player of the match, Karen Keels, to belt home a last-minute winning goal to start great scenes of celebration as Derry move up to senior championship for next season. It ended Derry two goals and ten points, Galway two goals and nine points. Just delighted we got the one and whether we got a goal in the seven minute or the last, you know, a goal.